Hi, this is Tay Calhoun. I'm here with Bob Golding, and uh, we're going to show you how to use XPerf to do some good triage on slow I.O. issues. Um, so again, we all know that the 411 version of XPerf is the uh, release we have out there, so you can download and use this on Windows 2008 Vista, um, and it's actually going to ship also in the Windows 7 SDK. And you can go get the release candidate and do this now, um, uh, and otherwise it'll be out soon. So uh, how do we uh, how do we gather these traces for slow I/O issues? Um, as you can see here, um, I've got um, this bash file that we'll post with um, the video uh, that essentially turns on some trace flags, uh, proc thread loader, C switch file name, uh, and some perhaps new ones to so you file I/O, file I/O init, uh, drivers, which is going to be a very important section. Uh, and notice when we're doing dash F to go to a file. And you want to target this to um, a location that you're not tracing. Uh, in other words, if your slow performance is on D, you probably want to put it on, um, you know, your E E volume, so it's not to uh, affect what you're measuring. Um, some additional flags here in Stack Walk. You'll see um, it, it, we have C switch, disk flags, file flags. Uh, so those are all going to be ones that we're going to capture um, stack traces for. Uh, and we have some uh, some some buffer magic here that's actually going to uh, record this in a circular buffer so that you can have this running and then hit the issue and then just stop the trace uh, and not overwrite any of your data. Uh, and the last command is the D to, to merge it to a file. So, um, friend Bob has already done this and uh, we've created a trace here, um, xpersolio-circular.etl uh, and this is what this is going to look like. So you're going to just run xperf against the, the etl file and open it up here. Um, and the first thing we want to look at is, um, in our heuristic we're going to use here is look at driver delay tab. Uh, or, or frame. So driver delay is greater than or equal to 100 milliseconds, which is a pretty substantial delay considering storage. You can crank this down further if you right click and then select select the d delay threshold here. Um, we're just going to leave it at 100 for now. So before we get started, just a reminder to right click and load symbols. Um, you have to have your symbol path configured. Um, you'll notice here I have the uh, public symbol server. Uh, so if you want to do any kind of stack trace analysis, uh, you, you definitely want to set that. Not necessary when you're gathering the trace, but definitely necessary when you're analyzing the trace if you want to stack trace resolution. Okay, so back to the trace here. Um, we see a, a couple of interesting kind of things here with these um, red and, and blue um, marks in the trace. Bob, could you give us a little more information about what that actually means? Basically, when the RP make RIO RI, RI, drivers are a stacked architecture, one lives on top of the other. And what you are seeing is the I.O. request packet making its way down the stack through all the drivers that live in the stack. You have the vol staff driver, the volume manager, the petition manager, class plug and play, and at the very bottom, the store port. And to initiate a request, it's I.O. call driver. And to complete a request, it's, there's a function called I.O. complete request that the drivers call. And then the stack, the, uh, the operation will unwind and you'll go backwards up the stack. And what you're seeing there is the time duration between the start and the completion. Okay. Awesome. So, so it sounds like this tracing is an I.O. manager and this could be taken advantage of for any uh, I.O. stack issue if it's a uh, classically developed driver, I guess. So. Um, the store port driver is at the very bottom. The store port driver inter interfaces directly with the uh, storage mini port or adapter driver, which is responsible for putting the request out onto the sand and uh, accepting it when it comes back. And in turn, it will tell the store port driver that the request is complete. So if you see a delay in the store port driver, odds are the uh, delay is in the storage. Gotcha, because this is the last driver before the mini port and then thus the, the, the store. Okay. That makes that makes complete sense. So what we can do then with that information that Bob has just given us is we can zoom in on some of these time periods uh, by just right click or oh, left clicking, select, and then right click zoom selection. Um, and notice you can increase the size of this so you can get a better understanding of uh, how many IOs are delayed here. Um, the red uh, call driver and then the blue uh, at, at complete request you see we have you know one stack here and we have another request that was delayed here and then another here and so on. So this is really interesting tracing you can get um, just from my own manager's perspective but you can actually correlate that as well 
with whatever um, file uh, events that we've actually captured here and you can see that there are quite a few. Uh, we have create, flush, close, write. So what you can do is correlate that information with some of the I.O. that actually happened. So right click, load symbols, make sure that's checked, and then do your summary table. And this is interesting because um, if, you, if you select, let's actually select the view so we'll get all of these events. Right click, summary table. Now we can see all of our event types and then we can have stacks for all of them as well. So if we expand, let's say on the read, here are all the IO, the read IOs that happen um, to this you know, particular file. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but you're copying files out of the Windows director for this particular test, right? Correct. All right, so, so now we can actually look at you know, what that looked like in terms of what stack initiated that IO operation. So again, a lot of you know, context around uh, what particular was going on with the system at this point in time, what process was initiating all the IO, um, and then really where it was in the system. You notice we only instrument down to around the filter manager uh, level with this particular uh, stack tracing. Um, so, you know, file info, sys, you know, has some event data that actually added to the mix here. Uh, but you can see quite clearly here's the, uh, here's the files. Um, you can actually look at the amount of IO requests, ERP count, um, for, for whatever particular file you think is most accessed. Um, and you notice the start and end times uh, correspond to the actual the time stamps in here where we're looking at something that happened at, you know, uh, 19 and then 195762 was the, the end of that event. So you can continue to drill down into here. Uh, let's say it was this area. Uh, you can zoom to that selection as well and then hone in on a particular um, uh, piece of the, the puzzle here where you're looking at uh, one more interesting read than the other correlated with uh, the delay you see here uh, at the top and driver delays. So that's how you could easily triage some of these, uh, you know, s slow storage or um, I/O delay issues with uh, the public XPerf tools. Um, we hope this is very helpful um, and, uh, and saves you a lot of time in, uh, in triaging these problems.